It's a great, great day. It's a November day, and it's beautiful. The weather's it fantastic. Is it is such a nice evening time to sit outside and enjoy the weather and see the moon in the sky. It's a great time to eat outside. And, and remember, food. we're celebrating Veterans Day. And Amen. so we are thankful for all those that have served. And yes. God bless you to keep our country safe. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. And this month, you know, every every month in the Culinary View, we talk about a, a different ingredient that is being harvested at this time, one that you can use in your own kitchen and at, serve at your family table. And what a great time of year in November to be talking about it because we're getting ready for Thanksgiving and the holiday season, a lot of entertaining, a lot of food. And so this month, we're going to talk about persimmons which is not something that's a normal staple in my kitchen, but it was really exciting to get to taste it and try the food and wine pairing with it. It's a first for me. I have never tasted a persimmon <laughs> uh, before, and I, I joke about it because sometimes when I do a tasting, I'll say, you know, it tastes like a persimmon nut. <laughs> and people go, oh, yes, it tastes just like a persimmon nut. I don't even know what a persimmon nut tastes like. I mean, you know, it's amazing. Such a right. Thing. No. So this one um, was the most challenging, I think, that I, I have done with wine and food pairing because the persimmon, though it looks, and it sort of looks like a tomato, you know, it, and it has that really pretty color and it's nice and smooth. So you're expecting some luscious kind of juicy maybe, fruit. Maybe juicy. even a peach. It could look like a peach, <laughs> it's kind you of know. Like a peach. It looks harmless, you know, it really does. But it is the most tannic fruit that I have ever tasted. Whoa. It just, you know, we talk about the pucker power of tannin and it just sucks in. It your... sucked my mouth and my <laughs> cheeks. It was unbelievable. I've never tasted anything so tannic in my life. <laughs> and the challenge with that is, of course, with wines. And so we experimented with a few different ones and found that the 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 ones that we like the best with the wine, with the um, the persimmons, or I should say the wines that the persimmons actually complemented, because we choose the wines first, right, were their wines that had some fat to it. And if you think about that, because you have the tannin and the fruit, you need a fat and a sweet to try to actually mask that tannin, help to mellow it out some in the mouth. So what did you do? I mean, you did something really special. There. I did, yeah. actually. Well, first, I chose the wine. And so I chose the Chenin Blanc because the Chenin Blanc is very light. It's very delicate. And it's got sort of a very creamy fat finish to it. It's easy to pair with any food. And it balanced nicely the tannins in the persimmons. And it's the leopard Chenin Blanc. It's yes. a very special Chenin Blanc. It comes to us from the leopard family in Brownfield, Texas. And uh and it and it grows absolutely beautifully uh there on the high plains at about 3600 feet. And it produces a Chenin Blanc that is really amazing. I mean, this wine is so lovely. It's it tastes, well, it smells you smell it and you smell a uh, rose petals. I mean, it, it is amazing. It is so consistent with this vineyard and the variety. So it smells absolutely delicious. And when you taste it, it's got that underlying kind of creamy character mm -hmm. to it. So it almost uh, tastes like it's got mallow lactic, the same kind of transition acid as in Chardonnay. So it really is a full-bodied white. Yeah, and you know, there was a time when they called Chenin Blanc the poor man's Chardonnay. Absolutely. Because they had so much, so many similar characteristics. So this is a uh, pomegranate sauce or dressing that you can use. Um, and I took this from the, the concept of what, Chef Zeke from the Vintage House actually did for our wine premiere. He did a beautiful pomegranate, I mean, excuse me, persimmon uh, salad with a persimmon dressing, and it was delicious. And, and where's the recipe? Uh, the recipe is on the website at merbon.com. It's M-E-R-Dash. 
B-O-N dot com. And you'll find all of our Culinary View videos and recipes and also Michael Vadreen's horticulture articles about each ingredient that we discuss each month. Because I'm telling you something. If you take the uh, raw (laughs) persimmon and you eat it, it will dry your face. (laughs) So it needs a wonderful recipe. And this is a great recipe. It, it works. So this one actually did work with the, with the Chenin Blanc because the Chenin Blanc was soft enough and fatty enough to uh, ba- balance it out. But it still was very tannic in character. And so I wanted to do it something that would be a little bit more friendly to other styles of wines, including some light to medium body breads. So what I did was I added feta cheese in this one Because remember, feta cheese is a fat, right? Same concept, has a little salt. So you blend that in and it gives that creamier, uh, softer character and helps to cover the sharp edge of the tannin. And so with this, the Chenin Blanc still works with it. It worked really well. It really worked well. But you can also introduce other wines as well. And the other wine that well is the Solera because the Solera is so, so special. You know, Solera, the name Solera, means a combination of vintages. So what Paul Mitchell is doing is he is taking multiple vintages, three in mind, and he is blending those three vintages. And then he'll take parts of each of those vintages and bottle it. And then the new vintage basically then creates the the new third vintage. Uh, and and it, it's fabulous because it, it has the complexity of the older vintage and the fruitfulness of the younger vintage. So it's just a wonderful, wonderful wine. And, you know, most people consider it to be like a dessert style wine. And it is a great dessert all by itself. Just a glass of that at the end of the meal is perfect for dessert. And it smells, oh, absolutely heavenly. I mean, you know, these vines are old vine. You know, they're old vine. These vines have been here on the estate for 45 years, some of them. And uh, and they're really, truly old vine because old vine is anything over 25 years. So these are well over 25 years and they're really old vine. They have that wonderful old vine characteristic. And a sweet wine like this, or like our Angel Riesling, our Ports, because of the sweetness levels in it, it actually masks the tannins. And there goes Homeland Security. (laughs) You know, anytime we do a video, you know, the Homeland Security really checks us out and they want to make sure that we're safe and all that good stuff like that. It doesn't seem to matter what time of day. It doesn't matter. No, as long as we're doing a video. Homeland Security is coming by. But when you have a wine like that, like with this nice sweetness to it, it it really does pair nicely with something that has the strong tannins like this, the persimmon that we have. And I could tell you the addition mm-hmm. of that feta mm-hmm. has made that, that whole recipe just become f- friendly to every wine. Yes. It goes with white wine, sweet wines, red wines. Dessert style wines, it really works and and it adds something I think unique because most people have never had or tasted this wonderful <laughs> it's, uh, it's fruit. It's very unusual. Uh, it, I mean, it's available at your markets, at the farmer's market. We got these at the farm patch. But it's usually only at certain times of the year. Exactly. I mean, and, you don't see this unless it's the fall. And now it's here. Um there are different types. This is a hachilla uh, a persimmon, which does tend to be a little bit more tannic, a, a little firmer in texture. Um, so on these, you want to let them ripen until they're really soft. Oh. And you almost think that it's over overripe, but that's when it's the sweetest and it's easiest to work with. 
the firmer it is, the more tannic it is, and the more challenging it is. So and you have to be more creative. It's very flavorful. So it's mm -hmm. worth the effort. It's worth the effort. It's got a sweetness to it that's really nice. And then it, you hit, you're hit with that with the tannin finish to it. And I think the other thing to talk about, because, because we're going into this uh, entertaining season with Thanksgiving and Christmas, is that you have audiences that are varied and diverse. And the nice thing about the Chenin Blanc is that it appeals to any palate. It's because it's so soft, so delicate, it's easy drinking. And so it's a nice wine to serve at large gatherings. And the same thing with the Solera, because it's just, a, it's a oh. beautiful, smooth, yummy dessert wine. Everybody loves Solera. Mm -hmm. It is such an amazing product. It's just beautiful. And it makes a great house gift too. You know, if you're going to visit someone, you're attending a party, you want to take a gift to the host or hostess. The Solera is a beautiful gift to give. Very unique. Mm -hmm. So on behalf of Merrill and I and all the great folks at Messinoff, we want to wish all of you a great holiday season, mm -hmm. a great veteran day, and God yeah, yeah. bless all of you and just enjoy wine and enjoy your life. God bless and happy Thanksgiving. So long.